So, Joe, great to, uh, great to see you. We opened the show tonight with a story that I think is significant. Um, there, it's come to our attention, and it's true, that NBC uh, Brass, the people who run it, Andy Lack, who runs the news division, um, knew that the famous Access Hollywood tape was being leaked to the Washington Post, that it was done intentionally mm. um, because they wanted to distance themselves from it, but they wanted to hurt Trump before the presidential uh, debate two days later. Does that come as a shock to you who covers television? Well, first I have to push back a little bit. We don't know definitively that Angie Lack had knowledge of that. I, I understand that it's scuttlebutt within our bubble, but we don't have a definitive report or confirmation I, 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 I can say that definitively, yes. Okay, you could say that. I, I, yes. I'm hesitant to do that. Right. Um, look, I, I would think that given that that tape, Access Hollywood, bombshell revelations, would right. have not only changed the presidential election, but the entire course of the country forever. Think of Trump, Clinton, the different agendas, Supreme right. Court justice, you go down the line, it, it is huge. And I would think, I get it's 11 years later and you got to connect a lot of dots and go back, but you at least try and you at least try to do an internal investigation to figure out where that tape went. Because I'm sure that more than a couple of people know exactly what happened there and you at least make the effort. But from what I can tell, that effort hasn't been made or it hasn't been made public that it's been made. And I would think if they did, make an investigation, they would make that known to the well, public. Well, and we, and we asked them today that exact question, what, where's your internal investigation, and they refused comment. I mean, look, if someone stole the biggest news story of the year out of your office, mm -hmm. you might want to find out how that happened. But the bigger, if you take three steps back, story is this. Here a news organization had this tape, and no one's claiming the tape wasn't real. President Trump said what he said on the tape. Sure. You know, I'm not defending it. But that was their intellectual property. They owned it, and yet they surreptitiously fed it to another news organization. Can you think of any precedent for that? Have you ever seen anything like that or heard of anything like that ever? No, I've never seen that actually happen, Tucker. Uh, but you know, I, I'm sure that NBC News would have wanted their hands on it first and how it got to the Washington Post. Uh, again, that's what investigations are for, and that's why you conduct them. Uh, but you know, this is how things are now in news, Tucker, in terms of reporters asking people to commit illegal acts and leak information. Nicholas Kristof, and I asked your producers right before I came on, can you put together this tweet real quick that he put out last week? Nicholas Kristof won Pulitzers at the New York Times, and he actually solicited information on Twitter saying, please send Donald Trump's tax returns. There it is on screen. Here's the New York Times address. And he asked the IRS to do that, an employee there. You know what that is, Tucker, when you actually steal and leak that kind of information? If you're an employee, right. a federal employee, it's a felony. And you have journalists asking regular people to commit felonies in order to advance a story, a narrative. It's sick. And the New York Times executive editor, Dean Paquet, also said last year he was willing to go to jail for five years if he could get Trump's tax returns. So he is setting the example at the paper of record that illegal acts and leaks should happen if we can get the story. And that is the sad state of journalism in 2017. Well, and not just journalism. I mean, speaking for myself, I always want more information, almost no matter where, you know, if Satan handed me relevant information, I'd run with it because it's the information that matters. What I'm struck by and frightened by is the idea that federal employees who have so much of our information, intimate information, and they safeguard it, supposedly, we pay them to do that, would be leaking in order to hurt people they disagree with politically. That's scary from behind a cloak of anonymity. I mean, that's when you get government trying to destroy people on the basis of difference of belief. I mean, that, I can't imagine anything scarier than that. No, it, it should be very alarming for, for everybody out there. And with this uh, report on MSNBC tonight as far as the 2005 tax returns, the real story I can see so far is that those got leaked by somebody. Not what's in them, as far as I can tell, unless they're saving it for the end of the show. And that's what should be the lead story tomorrow, not what's in them. And I'm, I'll, I'll be very curious to see exactly what the New York Times and Washington Post and all of traditional media lead with in this situation. Well, I mean, and sort of bring it back to the, to the first story very quickly. So the Access Hollywood tape breaks end of the first week of October, right before that uh, debate. October 7th, yeah. Uh, exactly, in St. Louis. And in, in the kerfuffle over it, I didn't hear anybody ask the obvious question of NBC, which is, hey, this is your tape. You've had it for 11 years. You knew it existed. How did the Washington Post get it? Why did nobody ask that obvious question of a news organization? Because everybody loved the narrative. Everybody right. saw that as the end of Donald Trump, and that blotted out the sun, and no one bothered to say, hey, where did that come from, by the way? So, look, this happened once before, by the way, and I know you got to go soon. 2004, remember what happened with Dan Rather, and he does that report on George yeah. W. Bush and his, and his guard service, and it was based on forged documents. CBS at least did an internal investigation, and they 
had accountability shown there as Dan Rather was shown the door. And that's what you got to do in these situations. Find where the leak is and show that you care. That's all I ask. It's just what's interesting to me that news executives are so partisan or feel it their mission to destroy a politician. And this is not a defense of any specific politician, only a defense of traditional journalism where you're not partisan. That they would feel that so overwhelmingly that they would give up a big story, that they would hurt one of their own employees because they're that committed to the cause of getting a specific person elected. Like, that's the behavior of a political consultant, not of a news division chief. Let's put it this way, Tucker. Jorge Ramos won a Walter Cronkite Award yesterday. Jorge Ramos is a known advocate. He is not an anchor. That's right. But he has a mission, and the mission is to take down Donald Trump at every chance he can. So then the people behind the Walter Cronkite Award, which is obviously uh, an iconic name in this business, and they say, we're going to give it to Jorge Ramos, because not because he's doing good journalism, because we agree with the message. And that's the state of journalism today, where it's all about the narrative and not about the responsibilities that we're supposed to have, which is to be objective. Here's what Ramos said last year. He said neutrality is not an option when it comes to Donald right. Trump, and he gets a Walter Cronkite Award. Right, and the, and the problem is not that they have opinions. I have tons of opinions. The problem is you're, not an if anchor. you're so emotionally engaged in a story mm -hmm. that you can't 